Next, we'll look at solving more than one equation at the same time. This is known as solving equations simultaneously. Okay, uh, so let's see how we go about doing that. So let's say we have two equations like these x plus y equals 10, x minus y equals 2. We want to find one pair of x and y values that satisfies both of these equations at the same time. That satisfies both the equations. Okay, so this is basically what you call solving equations simultaneously. So two equations, two variables, one solution, right? So for this one, the simplest thing is that you add the two equations. So I'm going to add, so that when I put a positive here, it means the two equations are being added. X and X, they are same like terms. So I have one X and one X, they will add up to give me two X. Plus Y, negative Y, positive Y, negative Y. They will cancel out, give me a zero. Okay, all right, and then 10 and 2, when I add it together, will give me a 12. So this, if I divide both sides by 2, I'll get x equals 6. Simple enough, I got the value of 6 for x. Now, let's say this is my first equation, this is my second equation. So I, I take my first equation, which is x plus y equals 10, I rearrange it so that I have y on one side, I take the x to the other side, which becomes negative x, since this was positive on the right side. And here, I plug in the value of x that I just found, which is 6. So 10 minus 6 equals 4. So this solution, the solution for these, these two equations is for x, I have 6, for y, I have 4. So now, GRE would never obviously ask you straightforward like this, that, oh, you have the two equations, solve, find me x and y. That's never the case. So let's look at one scenario where GRE would test you on this concept. So here's a problem we have. If 3a plus 5b is 10 and 5a plus 3b is 30, what is the average of a and b? Okay, average, we know average means I want to take the sum a plus b and I want to take divide by the number of things I have which is 2 in this case. So this is the value I'm trying to look for and they have given me two equations 3a plus 5b equals 10, 5a plus 3b equals 30. Now I can do this simultaneously. Um, let's say I add the two equations. I'm adding the two equations. I get 3a and 5a will give me 8a, 5b and 3b will also give me 8b, that's nice, and you'll see why this is good for us, 10 and 30 will give me 40, and how about I factor out an 8 from the left side, because 8 is present in the first term as well as the second term, so I factor out the 8, and I'm left with 8 times a plus b equals 40, let's divide both sides by 8, so I have 8, uh, taken away from the left side. So 8 and 8 cancel. 8 times 1, 8 times 5 is 40. So I have a plus b equals 5. And now since I want to find the average, which is just a plus b over 2, as I wrote over here, I have a plus b over 2. Well, I'll divide both sides by 2. So my average is 5 over 2 or 2.5. Okay, simple enough. So that's one of the ways GRE might test you on solving equations simultaneously. Let's, let's look at another problem. So here we have, if x to the negative 2, this is a negative 2, minus 2 is equal to negative 1.9. So let me write these equations down. So I have, and I'll change the color, brighter color. So I have x raised to negative 2, minus 2, equals negative 1.96 this is my first equation then i have y to the one third minus five equals negative two and then i have one condition that x y product has to be positive okay all right and then they ask me to find the value of x and y all right let's see what i can do with the first equation how about i take this negative two to the other side now it's negative here on the left side, so when I take it to the other side, it will become a positive 2. 
So I'll have negative 1.96, positive 2. And this sum is 0 0.04. x to the minus 2. How about I I don't like the negative and the exponent. So one way I can write a reciprocal and that way the power becomes positive. Remember? As you switch between the numerator and denominator, the power switches between positive and negative uh, values. Alright, so I have 1 over x squared equals 0 0.004. Um, how about how about I at exchange these two? So I want x squared to the right side by itself and I want 0 0.04 on the other side. So we can do it step by step since x squared is being dividing over here when it goes to the other side it will become 0 0.04 times x squared and now I can divide both sides by 0 0.04 and this 0 0.04 will cancel with this 0 0.04 I'll only have x squared to divide side and on the left 1 divided by 0 0.04 will give me 25 that you can check quickly on the help later now to get x by itself I can take the square root and I'll get x equals either positive or negative 5. Remember whenever you take square roots you can have either a positive or negative value. Alright, let's keep it that way. Now come to the second equation. Let's do the same here. Take the negative 5 to the other side. It will become positive 5. I'll have negative 2 plus 5. I'll get a 3. And I have y raised to 1 third. Alright, I'm solving for y here. So I want to get rid of this ugly power, ugly fraction power. So one way to do that is that you raise this term by the denominator of the power, which is 3, okay? And the reason being, and first of all, you have to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. Remember, you always have to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Now, I, wrote, I, I increase the power by 3, or I raise the power by 3 because, let me write this y again, because now when I take out the brackets, I'll have these two exponents, 1 third and 3, multiplying together. And see, this 3 and this 3 will cancel out, and I'll get y by itself. And 3 raised, 3 cubed is just 27, so I have the value of 27. Okay, so I have my y value, I have my x value, and the question is asking for the value of x times y. Okay, one thing to be careful, x has two values, so which value should I pick? Well, the third condition given the problem is that the product of x and y has to be positive, greater than 0, which means x can only be 5. So x can, or the, or the value that I'm looking for is x equals 5, y equals 27, and this product 5 times 27 is 135, which is the answer. Cool. So, pretty ugly looking equations, a lot of math in here, but in the end, it comes out to be not that hard.